G'day everybody, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Um, today I've got this Howe rifle in front of us. Um, the good folks at um, Outdoor Sporting Agencies or OSA, um, which is an Australian um, agent for Howe rifles and uh, amongst other things, um, gave us this opportunity to shoot some of their rifles in the way of to do a bit of shooting with them and do a bit of an overview and look at them and do some videos with them. Um, the rifle that I thought I would like to look, uh, I'd like to look at was um, it is in the Hauer, and you'd know from watching my channel that I already have a couple of Hauers. I'm quite a fan of the Hauer barreled action, the uh, uh, Japanese company. Both their action and their barrels, in my experience, um, shoot above their weight. They are very good bang for your buck. Uh, but I'd say previously in the Hauer stuff, the likes of the stocks and things they came in. Um, in various forms were not quite up to my precision stuff. Precision stuff. I wouldn't say that they were um, terrible for maybe hunting and that sort of stuff, but I think it's where they sort of saved their money. Um, uh, but it was, um, I would generally be getting the, the barreled action and then putting in other bits and pieces. Not that long ago they came out with the Hauer chassis rifle, um, HCR. Um, and not too long uh, around that, around the same time frame, they came out with this one as well, which is the Australian Precision chassis rifle. Some subtle differences between them, but the same concept. A great barrel in action, and then they put it in a chassis, which in all uh, likelihood, I've had to shoot them to have a look at them, that sort of stuff, means you've got a ready-to-go package in a very good price. Now, I'm not going to go into the finer details of prices, because it varies where you are in the world, where you are in Australia, where you are in America, as to what deals you can get, that sort of stuff, but they are on deals. Um, it's Legacy Sports who actually um, deal with the Japanese um, how side of things or with the barreled action, um, which is also in your Weatherby Vanguard and there's a couple other rifles that use this gear. It is very good, um, like I said, I, I feel they punch above their weight. Uh, but Legacy Sports are the guys that have put it together um, and sell the Howe rifles um, and certainly in this one here which like I said is the Australian Precision chassis rifle or in the one that I think is a little bit more common around the place which is the HCR, the Howe chassis rifle. Different chassis system um, and I suppose in the basics of it they're, they're very similar, it's an aluminium chassis, they use an AR buffer tube style uh, buttstock to it. Um, the, the Howe chassis rifle has a half barrel guard this, the Australian Precision, has a full barrel guard. Um, with this, the Australian Precision, it comes with their normal polymer, the, how I normally come with these, uh, the normal polymer trigger guard and magazine, um, which they're great magazines, they work really nicely, they're very, they function very easily, all that sort of stuff works really well. Um, gentle on your brass being polymer and that sort of stuff. Don't fit quite the full length, um, so they're not quite as full length and for the guys who like the metal mags, then the Howe chassis rifle runs the Accurate Mag magazines, which carry a little bit more length, um, but really it's all similar on that side of things. They run different butt stocks down the back here between the two, very similar. This one, I think the main difference between this one on this Australian Precision chassis and the um, the Howe chassis rifle is that the Howe chassis rifle has an adjustable butt peg in up and down. That wouldn't be a bad feature to have in there. Um, and I'll go back into that with the butt pad, sorry, with the, with the butt stock. But of course the key in mind is that, this, that both of those are polymer systems, but being the AR buffer tube style set up for the chassis, you can upgrade them, you can change them over to different bits and pieces as to what suits you. Um, these aren't both they both aren't bad, they have the ability to clip on stuff, you know, extra bag riders like what we sell, um, or they have a decent bag rider in their setup, so that's not a bad side, side of things there. Um, they are able to be locked down, it is all adjustable, so you can actually move them forward and backwards. There is a lockdown point to stop them moving, uh, but like I said, I'll get back to, into that in a little while. The rest of the aluminium chassis, I find ergonomics are good, um, the, the, the pistol grips, some people like them straighter up and down, some people, you know, I don't really mind whichever they are. Um, I'm quite fine that my hand's flexible to be able to deal with a pistol grip on, on pretty much whatever form. And being in the aluminium chassis, you really do have good strength and good rigidity, which is the feature that I felt Howers were let down on. 
the, the rigidity in the chassis and the bedding in the chassis weren't good enough. Um, this answers all that properly. We have a sound, solid setup there. The only thing I did to this rifle at all was it just had a, a simple um, bolt-on swing uh, swivel stud on the front here. I actually unbolted that and put on a little Picatinny rail. Um, simple to do, M-lock um, compatible barrel guard. I just used M-lock to put on a little Picatinny rail um, and then I ran the Atlas bipod on the front of it. Just I liked the way the bipod worked and I had plans, which we're about to go into the video, to go out to the 1100 yards and shoot a 12 inch plate at 1100 yards. Corner low, oh, sort of. Right. Okay, well, you see what I was shooting like. I actually started shooting it with this um, the rifle as it was, with nothing like I said other than the, the bipod on it. I zeroed the scope and bipod on it, which and did some shooting. Um, I found with shooting without any muzzle brake, just as it is, it still shot fine. There was a little tiny bit of lift in it, nothing terrible. Um, with the butt pad being where it is, I, I would expect that little bit of force. The one thing I'd have to say in this one is that was a little bit aggressive to shoot. Um, when I say aggressive, it wasn't pushing me around, throwing around too much. It's a 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, it's a moderate weight gun. It's nice and stiff, but the butt pad is just too hard for that sort of stuff. So, yeah, nice and tough. So if you want to make a man up and deal with the pain, then go for it. To me, it needs needed a bit better butt pad for that sort of stuff. You just get too much shock out of the rifle. You lose some consistency when it's tapping into you a bit harder into the shoulder. Um, so really, if I was um, one of the first modifications that I'd be doing, if I was trying to shoot it like that, or I would do it anyway, is work out a way to get a softer butt pad on here because that was a little bit firm for me. Um, the adjustment and that side of things, how it all worked on that score, I was very happy with, just a little bit fair. Um, really for the long range stuff, I much prefer to have a muzzle brake. It settles things down, let the rifle push back straight, um, just makes it a bit easy to see where your shots went, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I could have fitted various ones, any muzzle brake would have done it, but as we have ours, I put one of our little three ports on there. So simply screwed that on. For those who aren't aware, one of the ways you can time them quickly is I use these little tiny shims, a little shim kit with me, shimmed it on. So that's all I did. Spun off the um, front here and spun on the muzzle brake. Um, and then we went shooting again. So that worked really nicely like that. Oh, yeah. See what this is, see if it works like this. Radio, oh, yeah. good to go. The movement in the uh, plants just behind the target. I think I should just under it, you think? Oh, I'll be thinking just over, but it's hard to say. Hit, nine o'clock, two inches left edge. Okay. On plate. <laughs> Top edge uh, on the handle. Yeah, okay, so it's still it's picking up a bit of speed as this barrel runs in. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'll see I'll put another one in the middle then in that, that theory. Okay. Hit, 
Bonhamidge. Okay, I love it. Seven o'clock. Bonhamidge. <laughs> well, that's all on and nice. Yeah. Maybe I will try for that center one. Okay. I think you're settling down pretty nicely. Okay. Clock. Two inches right edge. Oh, well, let's go across to the mile. Okay. And put steel on there. So that was the muzzle brake shooting. We're on target. That went really nicely. Um, as I said here, we went out to the mile there. Um, at the mile, I started to go out. I found I just didn't have enough elevation. What I had been shooting at 1,100 yards were these um, American Eagle 140 grain open tip match, I think it's this Sierra Match King, I'm not certain what's in there. They seem pretty consistent and pretty good, but with this little scope, I really only ended up with, um, it's on a 20 MOA rail, and this scope I only ended up with um, 35 minutes of elevation. So I was gonna need more than double than that, double that, well, I was going to need with those um, factory loads, I was probably gonna need around 90 minutes, 85 to 90 minutes of elevation. So what I had was just a few of, I had them in the truck, was um, the 140 grain burgers that I have in a general load for a couple of different hours I've run in. I still had a few of those, so I grabbed those, ran a couple of shots, found out I was going to need approximately 78 minutes of elevation. Um, and with this scope set up, you'll see I wound back to 12 power. I could hold on the bottom striation in the reticle um, and shot really well out there anyway here we are shooting at 15 or oh, sorry 1714 yards yeah. Saw it just at the tip of the uh, water trough, so it was like quarter of a target right of the target. So, but that's fine. That gives me a real hold. Saw it low. Yeah, I saw it. Level the right edge. One and a half targets low. Well, two targets low actually. Uh, top right, top, very top right, left corner, sorry, top left corner, just near the handle. Yep, it's on there. Now I'll see if, that, if I can repeat that. Yep, it's a fly in my ear just then. Just off top left. Oh, just the off. Same. I did the same shot, we got pretty much very okay. close to the same thing, didn't we? Yeah. Okay, I'll see if I can correct that. Hit, bottom, six o'clock, edge of plate. Yeah, that's nice and consistent out there. Yeah. Nice and consistent out there. <laughs> Well, this shot exactly like I hoped it would and expected it to, to be truthful. Um, I've always found in all the ones I've seen, the Howe barreled action works really well. Put it in a decent chassis, um, you're going to get a good combination. Um, then it comes down to ergonomics and, and aesthetics. Um, I, uh, the only thing I would say, in, in my opinion, I would prefer to have a little bit stronger butt pad in it in the way of an aluminium one if I was going to go and precision the rifle, but for general use and for most, really the polymer is really good, really flexible, works really nicely. The firm butt pad, we'd, once I put the brake on it, that started to work properly. I wouldn't mind if that was a little bit softer. 
you know that's that's just a little bit hard for my opinion in the way that the way it sits against the shoulder where it bounces off your body uh, I think a little bit soft will be nice but really that is also depending on where you put that I run them off my collarbone uh, you tuck it in your shoulder pocket then that's probably going to be less of an issue uh, but the, the little bag rider things work nicely being able to clip on the bottom I was happy with um, the overall setup of the rifle you know it was very I found ergonomically nice to use um, the magazine side of things, I couldn't run my long rounds in this magazine. I never have been able to. But I'd have to say, um, I'll pick that up so I can get it out of there. I've always found these plastic uh, magazines that I've seen in all the hours um, really nice on the brass, really gentle to go there. Um, and in any factory load, they were really nice. I was really happy with them. I, like I said, in the, in the Howe chassis rifle, the HCR, then you get the Accurate Mag, the Accurate Mag, which is a bit bigger and runs a little bit more length, uh, and back to a metal magazine if that's where you want to go with it. Overall thoughts on it? Listen, value for money. I think they are. Um, I think they're a good thing. I think they are going to kick it out of the park, truthfully, in the way of the amount you pay for these things and the way they're going to perform. I think they're a really good deal and something I've been hoping how I would get onto and do. They've done it, so. I would like to try the, um, the chassis rifle and see if there's any real differences. I expect a very similar result. But um, yeah, really liked it. Hope you enjoyed. the video guys I hope you enjoy uh, down below you've got a link to our web store where we have some of the specialized long-range shooting products that we actually produce check them out and for those of you who can it'd be great to get some help in our store we have support bits and when you purchase those the money goes direct to our channel and helps us bring these videos to you thanks guys